episode and I'm going to talk about storytelling. Um, I'm going to run through the process of how Maya um, actually create their videos from the first to the end and how we pick the songs um, and uh, how we choose the clips and edit them in a way that it matches our style. So I'm going to run through the process of um, storytelling for Mayad and how we actually process the whole editing and producing our videos. So the first step that we usually do is to find um, the right style that fits your um, company. So for us, Mayad, we have um, five different directors that have different styles and um, we, we try to match it to their personalities. So it depends on, on what your company really represents or what style are you really inclined to um, in terms of doing uh, the wedding videos and that's where you want to focus on. So I'm going to run through a bit of uh, the genre, we call it the genre or, or what kind of style of wedding videos do you really want to do. So for example, I'm going to show you one video that um, I believe is a romantic style of wedding video. This relationship is far from perfect. So as you can see here, the style is very simple, and nothing much in terms of shots, and any. it's more of static, but there's a lot of emotion. Um, this way, it feels so romantic that, you know, it's, it's focusing more on, on the, the, the visuals rather than, I mean the emotions rather than the visuals. So I think that's how the genre, in terms of cinematic style, defines um, the whole output of the video. And the music that we chose here is also very cinematic, um, it's just instrumental. Using the natural audio of the footage itself really helps out, you know, telling the story in a very romantic way. So I'm just going to browse through the whole footage. And I'll show at the end of this um, video, we actually created a, inserted a different music. And, um, but it still feels, you know, um, romantic. So we love using music that has a uh, vocals on it because it really moves. Um, it really moves the audience as they are watching it, feeling the lyrics of the song and at the same time the impact and the vows that match with the music. So you can see that it really does fit well 
with the climax of, the, of this part of the song. And all the emotions that you see with in, in the people that you see. So it doesn't really have that much shots or visuals, but it really focuses more on the emotions. Okay, so I'm just gonna browse through it. distance part of our relationship is now over and now we get to wake up together <laughs> and dream new dreams together I love you Gerald Saldivar and I believe with all my heart that the best is yet to come So this style really caters to um, people that just, who doesn't really want to do so much in their wedding in terms of um, um, shooting, but just wanted, you know, real emotions to come out. So that one is a good style. We have cinematic style as well. Cinematic style, I think if I were to define it, we use a lot of instrument, well, basically we use instrumental music um, on this. And I'm going to show you this wedding video that we did. It's basically a lot of really good shots, cinematic shots. And it also has a lot of very good angles or dramatic visuals that doesn't really include emotions. So as you can see, like simple shots um, like this shadow right here of the groom and then just lights on the window or the curtain. So these are the things that really adds up to the style. So cinematic style is basically just slow paced editing, but it has that um, dramatic feel to it. So the vows are still there as well. But the movements, as you can see, they're very slow long cuts <laughs> all throughout the video we really use the same i think two different songs or three different songs but it's all instrumental so that's another style that we have in in maya and the, the other um, genre that we do this is a lifestyle um, approach like in terms of the genre of the video that we're doing. So as you can see in this video, it's pretty much like a natural, um, the natural things that couples do during, um, while they're, you know, dating or enjoying their time together or um, just hanging out. And that's how we kind of um, document the whole thing or reenact the whole thing during the pre-wedding. So it, it looks really natural. So. Um, in terms of storytelling, the style also dictates based on the concept that you actually um, do for your videos. In this case, um, as you can see, that's basically just a normal you know, setting or situation when people have their holiday, um, traveling, that kind of style. So you can see a lot of that going on here, you know, just normal walking. So the edit, the edit here is usually like fast cuts and um, just like a, a quick flow of what happens on the day or what happens during their um, time together. So that's lifestyle as we define it. And then the other one would basically be high fashion so high fashion basically a lot of of the shots here are done to make it look cool like to make the couples look cool the actions are pretty simple like just walking but it, it gives that 
luxury feel like a perfume commercial or like editorial, you know, magazine shoot. Um, a lot of beauty shots showing off the uh, features of the bride and um, a lot of detail shots like the rings, um, cars, um, buildings, things that would really show much of like the cool, you know, generation that's, um, that the couple have um, in the time they get married. Um, other than that, it's basically just compared to like the romantic style. It's totally the song choice is is way different. Um, it's a different um, beat to it, but the music on the other end, uh, cinematic, is pretty slow. But this one is pretty fast. So I think if we were to to choose the the different styles or the genre, and this one is very in the generation. So. This become, became really famous um, in terms of style, but there are also those that really want you know, a, a romantic, cinematic um, approach to the wedding. So what I'm trying to say here is that you have to pick one style when you, you guys are starting off and you have to be identified with a specific style. Going back when we were starting, um, I think the the storytelling that really made us um, known in the industry would probably be mixing pre-wedding and the wedding day scenes. And during that time, I think 10 years um, ago, it wasn't that famous. Not a lot in the industry, I can say, does that. And so we kind of introduced a music video approach to the wedding video. Um, and by mixing pre-wedding and the wedding day itself. So this kind of storytelling in our, our same day edits really stand it out during the time. So it's really important that you pick a specific style and own it so that there's a brand recall. Like people would um, think that, you know, when they see the video, it should be your brand. So the second thing that we usually do once we come up with um, a genre or a specific style that we want is that we pick a music. And music for me plays a lot in storytelling. It's like 50% of storytelling in terms of your output. Once you pick the music and um, the footage that you have fits the music that you chose, your output would be at its best. So you have to choose what fits best with your style. So example, if you, if you chose a cinematic style and then you would know that this kind of music has to be chosen other than you know, the fast kind of... Um, I will play a few music uh, and, I, and, and I hope that you can help me define the style that this music belongs to. Or if you can imagine you know, the footage or the style of editing that you would um, be doing. Okay, so this music really starts off slow and instrumental, but then it has this lyrics. So in terms of style, this music would, I would put it in the category of romantic. I like romantic music with um, lyrics, with vocals. Because when people, when people listen to it, they listen to the lyrics. And the lyrics add so much impact to the video. The next one, cinematic. Cinematic music is mostly instrumental. So as you listen to this, you can actually imagine like what kind of shots you want you would want to put in.
So there's a flow that really builds up slowly. Normally, cinematic music has a lot of hypes and a lot of like highs and lows. So it's it's so it's such a good music to use for very um, let's say touching um, part of the wedding video. So you feel that it's slowly building up. Right, so this is, you know, this kind of music, it's, it's very, um, I think it's so easy to identify because once you hear these instruments and it has that, you know, strings hyped up during the, towards the end of the music, it's basically, you know, a cinematic um, approach to your wedding. Now we have happy music as well, and um, usually we use this when we know that the wedding is, or the couple, or the family, or the whole, all of their friends are like, they just enjoy and show off a lot of happy emotions. So the music that we choose is normally fast and um, it has a lot of beats to it. So you can identify easily what kind of genre this music really plays to. Right, so, and the last one, I think the latest one would be the high fashion music. And the high fashion music has a very uh, distinct beat to it. So the genre that usually um, we choose in this kind of style is is um, blues and rock. So when you search on that kind of genre, it gives you that this kind of music. Right. So it's lyrical. It has um, it has lyrics, and it feels like you're in a you know magazine shoot or like a fashion film. These are the kind of music that would uh, define the style that you chose. So you can't be, let's say, if, you're, if your company's style is documentary or let's say uh, cinematic, and then you choose a high fashion music to put in, the, in, in your video, then that wouldn't really match, right? So it's really important that you have to define yourself a style and then based on your style, choose the right music. So here are simple tips that would really help you in terms of selecting the music that you want to use for your wedding video. The first thing that we usually do is to really know the, the personality of your couple or your client. So once you get to know them, you would actually um, have a chance to um, understand like the things that they love, the music that they listen to, and the emotions that you can get from them while you actually meet them or talk to them would make you understand or it will help you how to choose the, the music. Well, basically, other than asking them what kind of music that they would, would want to be put in, in um, their wedding video, it would also help that you would under, or get to know them um, personally. The second thing is know what kind of reaction you want from your audience. So. Do you want them to smile, to laugh, to cry? These are the emotions that when you tell the story or through, through the wedding video that you show will give them engagement or they would feel or these emotions will determine if um, the audience is actually engaged to the story that you're trying to tell through the wedding video that you're showing. So when you know that you know, at the back of your mind when you're editing, you know that this part of the wedding video or that uh, the story that you're trying to tell, they would laugh, they would cry, then it really helps you to actually select the music. Third thing is you have to base the choice that you do on the things that's going on around you on the day itself. 
sometimes on the wedding day itself, um, there are certain things that you can control and the things that's going on a lot, like in our case. Um, I had an experience doing the same day edit, like a lot of times I would change the music during the ceremony or the reception. Just because I feel like um, it, the, the, the music that I chose for them didn't really match on the things that's going on on the day itself. So I don't really force myself to do an emotional video or emotional storytelling, right? So I'm going to show you um, how we transition from one music to another. And um, there are examples that I'm going to show that will explain why it has to be done that way. The first thing is, you know, give it time, do not rush. There are certain edits and I've seen a lot when I had a chance to uh, judge a few wedding videos um, for a competition. What I normally notice is that during the transition time of the song from one song to another, because we love doing two songs in one music video, it gives a different emotion in the first and in the second um, part of the video. They transition really fast. So I think that you have to give it time because music, you know, the emotions that you establish in the first song has to die down slowly and then move and then you will move up slowly to the next song. So this transition has to take time. So don't rush. So the second thing is that you can use the vowels just to transition to uh, the next music. And this is a very common style of storytelling. It's because um, the key here is to um, change the focus of your audience from the music to the voice of the people that are speaking. And that way, they would not notice that the music is actually changing. Another one would be using emotional scenes to change music. What are these emotional scenes? So I love to use um, for weddings here in the Philippines, they usually come out of the ceremony and people throwing petals and cheering for them. These are sound bites that are um, very emotional, very loud. And when you use it, it also you know, takes away the attention or the focus of your audience from the music um, to the voice that they're hearing or to the emotions that they're seeing on the, on the video. So. Um, another emotional scene would probably be um, the toasting, like when, when the couples toast during the getting ready part where they pour drinks and they shout, you know, cheers, and then you change the music. These are emotional scenes that will really help, you know, immediately trans transition you to, a, to the next music. One example is this video, as you can see, um, I would show you how you should be able to take time when you're transitioning from one music to another. At this part, we use a drone shot and a title, and then we change the music. And this really takes away the focus of the people that are watching from the music to the visuals um, that we are showing we take time to transition and we use the visuals, the drone shot, to actually do it. The next one is using the vows. I think we made sure that in this part, um, we took time, you know, we, we um, waited for the vows to finish before we actually move in to the next um, music. So listen carefully as they will be sharing their vows. So that part right there, when the vows started, that we changed the music. All right. So another one. Okay. So that's using vows. 
how to use instrumental and vocal version in your wedding video. If I get a chance to uh, find a music that has an instrumental version of it, then I would really put that in my playlist and reserve that for, for a video that I'm going to do. The reason why is that, so it gives me a lot of flexibility in terms of um, stretching out the parts where I want it, str I want it stretched, like the vows, um, the speeches, just because I can use the instrumental part and cut them into or, or stretch them and then use the vocal parts where I need the emotions to go higher. So I'm going to show you how it's done, um, cutting the instrumental or stretching the instrumental part of the music and putting the vowels specifically to the parts where I want it to be. So in my timeline, I have two music. So one is instrumental and one is um, with vocal. So I usually put them on, um, together in one timeline like this and I make sure that that the timing of every beat is um, both of the music um, music's timing is really perfect and that way I can and that way I can really stretch them out um, to the parts that I wanted so I know that I have my vows right here with me and these are the parts that I actually chose, quite disorganized, but that's how we usually do it when we're doing the same day edit. Most important is um, the output that you're actually going to show. So I'm going to pick the best part that I feel like using in this part of the music. So I think this part of the music actually really sounds really good for me. Like I can put the vowels right there. It's just that it has, you know, it has vocals. Now I want you guys to listen and compare and see how it sounds like if we don't actually use the instrumental part of the music. So what you can hear are two voices, right? So one is the singer and one actually from the bride. So it doesn't really sound, you know, you're shifting focus on two different voices, which doesn't sound right. For me, it really takes away the focus of the audience to listening to the vows, which is the most important part of the music, of the video, than um, listening to the voice of the singer. So this part, I usually, uh, this is the best part for me in using instrumental and vocal songs, both music at the same time is because I can cut right here and just disable the part where there is vocals, there are vocals and um, just use the instrumental like this. Then it's as you can as you can listen to it. There's a huge difference from the first one that I showed you. Um, now it's more clear where the the audience should focus on, and the focus you know goes to the bride. Right. So this is the basic way. You know, there's more. Um, things that you can actually do when you finally discovered how to stretch things out, how to use the chorus and the verse part. But one thing that I really love to do is to put the vowels in the bridge of the music. The bridge is the part where like the music really goes down like as what you've um, heard from the example that I used and then build up the um, climax towards it. 
All right, so moving forward to the next topic, um, scene selection. So how do you actually choose the best clips in your timeline? So this is the heart of storytelling. I'm, I will be explaining to you um, parts of the, of the process that we do in, in terms of editing that we really, I feel like it's the most important, which is the mini story. How do you build your mini story? Mini stories are small parts of the whole wedding video that we edit that actually, you know, tells portion of the whole, of the bigger picture, of the whole story. So there are certain tips or tricks that really helps um, you when you edit your mini story. So first, um, the way we do it, I mean the way I would edit my mini story is really through the variety of shots. So there you have wide, mid and tight shots, right? Or even like close-ups or extreme close-ups. And these are, this really helps um, in terms of telling your, your mini story. Example for this one. Mid shot of them walking towards the car and a wide shot showing where it actually happened. So it's a, it's a short two clip sequence, but it already tells you a lot of information that they are going out and probably driving towards somewhere that they will want to hang out. Right, so that's another mini story. Another mini story here, you know, starting with a mid shot, um, another mid shot, just two mid shots, and by putting them together both at the same, um, like same sequence or same action, actually continuing the action actually tells the story that they are up to something. They are actually traveling or finding a place where they can drive and hang out. So my explanation here of, in terms of variety of shots, how important it is when you're telling a story, when you're building your mini story is, it gives the audience different angles to see what actually goes or happening in the, in, in the location itself. Now, the other tip is that it should have a start and end. Every story has to have a start and an end. So if I'm editing, I always make sure that there is a reason behind my cuts. Why did I cut in that part? Why do I have to end it like this? So that reasoning really helps me establish a start and, and an end to the mini story that I build. Next one is the editing styles. Okay, so there's a lot of editing styles that we usually do and here are some of the stuff that we love doing and these are actually pretty basic um, but I will try to explain to you for those that are actually new in the industry this will really help you a lot so fill in our as you can see here we love doing fill ins on our wedding videos because it makes the audience jump to a different setting while the actual thing is actually happening. So here you can you can hear you can actually listen to the vows. The bride actually is telling her vows, and then the the footage um, that we show during that part is the groom walking down the aisle. So you fill in the actual um, scene that re that's really happening, the reality, with the things that actually happen hours before the reality. So that's fill in, and we do that a lot. The next is random. Random is pretty much showing off a lot of different cuts that doesn't really match. So it's quite advanced. The goal here is to make it to visually make it look um, very pleasing or entertaining. So there is still a relationship between a variety of shots, mid, wide, and tight. 
but it doesn't really create so much story so it's pretty random the shots are pretty random right there's no story base it's all like movements from movement cut to action so cut to action is actually just showing cutting different scenes based on the movement of your subject so as you can see this is one angle at the back they're running the next angle in the front they're still running and then the last angle a wide shot they're still running so these three clips that showing the same action is actually cut cut to action that's how we call it another transition that we usually do and we're fond of is like swiping up swiping left and swiping right so it's very entertaining it doesn't really have to match like the scenes and the next one but it's just quite fancy you know to uh, show a bit of that kind of style so wrapping up this episode about storytelling um, there are a few things that I can summarize you know when you're editing your wedding video is that you have to think and think feel your way to your edit. A lot of times, as an artist, like we, I can compare ourselves to like painters and how they feel when they're doing their work of art, right? So it's based really on how they feel during the time and how they, you know, create um, their masterpieces. So sometimes when you are at your best, when you feel like you're happier, when you feel like you're really sad, um, it actually really helps you create you know a really good story or in terms of um, editing as well that's why sometimes you feel like you don't have you know you extend your days too much and say that you know I don't feel really like doing this now I'm gonna do it later or tomorrow uh, until you finally find the right emotion or feeling or or moment that you would really get into it and do it so when you're editing your video it has to be speaking from your interpretation it's all it's your own interpretation of how you're going to tell the story and the vows are there to guide you and and, and make you i mean that's like the the um huge part of the of your storytelling but then we when if you don't feel really attached to what they're saying or if you don't really feel like you're emotionally connected with the emotions that these people or these two couple are sharing then i can say that you know it you might miss the whole part of the story so you have to think and feel at the same time when you're browsing through the footage, you're editing your, your wedding video. And I would do that um, as much as I can when I'm editing the same day edits. I would definitely listen over and over again and just to make sure that I would get the right or the story and I would feel connected to the whole thing um, that's going on on the wedding day itself and last but not least of course you have to feel when you cut it's not all the time that you just cut any time um, in the clips but you have to feel okay this is the right part where i have to cut i should extend the emotions that she's crying and i will cut at that end so you have to feel connected um, to the cuts that you're actually doing as well so generally storytelling has a lot to do with your emotion as well as an editor you have to feel a lot of, of what's going on around you, the footage that you have, the music that you chose, the vows, everything that's happening so that you can tell the story perfectly. So that's it for storytelling and I hope that you guys learned a lot. If you want to follow my WeChat and Maya's WeChat, it's on the screen right there and I hope you guys enjoyed this week's episode.